This video explains how to graph a function rule. The process will be the same for all of these problems. What you do is, whatever the rule is, you first make a table, second plot points, and then, if it's appropriate, connect the points with either a straight or a curved line, as we'll see. So let's start with the function y equals 2x minus 3. And we'll make a table and we'll just pick some random X's. Um, we want to pick X's that are going to fit on the graph. So we'll start by picking negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Then we plug or substitute each one of these X variables into the equation, find out what Y is, and then we've got our XY pair. So let's do that. First one will be 2 times negative 2 minus 3. That's negative 4 minus 3. That's negative 7. This one will be 2 times negative 1 minus 3. That's negative 2 minus 3. That's negative 5. And let's complete the other ones. Okay, so now we have our values, and our values are negative 2, negative 7, negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, and 2, 1. Now we did all these by hand, and sometimes you have to do that, but this could also be done on a calculator. Now let's make the graph. We'll notice that the point negative 2, negative 7 kind of falls off the graph, so we won't graph that right now. Let's just graph the ones that fit negative 1, negative 5, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, and 2, 1. In this case the points look like they line up on a straight line, and in fact they do, so we can just draw a straight line, and it's a good idea to extend it in both directions, and to indicate that it goes on forever, we'll just put an arrow on either end, and there's our graph. Now we'd like to graph y equals 3x plus 8. Let's say that we decided to start making our table at 0. Let's see what the values would be for y. When we try to plot these points, you'll notice that they fall outside of the scope of the graph. So for instance, 0, 8. 0, 8 is way up off the top of the graph. When that happens, it's a good idea to see if you can find other points to plot that might fit. Here, if you work this way, it looks like the y values are going down. So let's go down in x values. Let's go to maybe negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 and see how that works out. And we can see that those values do indeed fit on our graph, so let's uh, graph them. Negative 1, 5, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 1. Here's a function that has some rather large numbers in it. We're going to make a table first and then see how to graph it. I'm going to use a calculator to make this table since the numbers are so large. Now first we see that we can label the x-axis easily, so let's do that. This will be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. But let's look at these y numbers. They're pretty big. And if we just go up here by 1's, they're not going to fit. So let's try a few things. Um, maybe if we go up by 1000's, these numbers will fit. Let's try that. Now if we look at those, it certainly doesn't look like we're going to get up to 22,000 easily on this graph. So let's try going up maybe by five thousands and see if that will work. That looks like things are going to work better. So let's plot these points and draw our graph. 
negative 3, negative 14,000, negative 2, negative 8,000, negative 1, 2,000, 0, 4,000, 1, 10,000, 2, 16,000, and 3, 22,000. Draw the line, put the arrows in, and we're done. And indeed, that works a lot better. Now we're going to learn the difference between discrete and continuous functions. Let's consider this first problem. How many can go? We're going on a field trip and we need parents to drive students. And Each parent can take five students in the car. So what we want to do is graph the maximum number of students that we can take given the number of parents who drive. So if one parent drives, we can take five students. Two, gra two drive, 10, 3, 15, 4, 20, and so on. Now let's make a graph of those points. 1, 5, 2, 10, 3, 15, and 4, 20. Now normally we would connect these dots with a line, but in this case that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because you can't have half of a parent, and since each car will take exactly five students, you'll never have a situation where a car could take two and a half students or a car could take three-fifths of a student. So when we're measuring things like parents or cars or capacities, which can only be certain numbers, and they can't be, in this case, they can't be decimals, we say that the situation is discrete. And when we make a graph, the graph will only have the dots. We do not connect the dots with a line if the graph is discrete. Let's now take a look at a continuous graph. Now in this, we've got a 20 gallon fish tank and it weighs 15 pounds when it's empty. Water weighs about 8.3 pounds per gallon and we want to make a graph of the combined weight of the fish tank and the water based on how much water in the, is in the tank. Now if there are zero gallons of water in the tank, then the tank is just going to weigh 15 pounds. If there's one gallon of water, that's going to be 8.3 times one gallon plus 15 pounds, and that will be about 23.3 uh, pounds. And for two gallons, 31.6 pounds, and for three gallons, 39.9 pounds. And we can see that the function is going to be 8.3x plus 15 equals y. Here's the graph. And notice that we've labeled the x-axis with gallons and the y-axis with weight. And we made the weight go up by tens so that all of these points would fit. Now let's plot the points. So we plotted the four points. And now we ask, should we draw a line? Well, does water come just in increments of one gallon, like can you only put exactly one gallon or exactly two gallons or exactly three gallons in the tank? And no, you can put any amount of water in. It could be half a gallon, it could be two and a third gallon, it could be eight and five-sevenths gallons. So any amount of water could be in there. And the tank plus the water could have any weight that's between 15 and whatever corresponds to the amount of water that's in the tank. So we can, in this case, draw a line to indicate that this graph is continuous. And in fact, when you graph a continuous quantity, you do draw the line. We can then look at the graph and say, well, how much would the tank weigh if I had three and a half gallons of water? So we can start from three and a half, go up here, and then look left, and we can see that the tank will weigh about 45 pounds, and that does make sense. So once again, this is a continuous situation. We're now going to take a look at how to graph a nonlinear function rule. As before, we'll start by making a table. So let's use our function rule. If x is negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 plus 2, that's absolute value of negative 3 is 3 plus 2 equals 5. The absolute value of negative 2 plus 2, that's 2 plus 2, that's 4. And we can continue the process to complete the table.
and we can see that this graph is a nonlinear graph. Now we'll draw a line and place the arrows and this is what an absolute value graph looks like. If you're graphing an absolute value and you haven't come to a place where there's a V, it's a good idea to plot a few more points either to the left or the right to make sure that you get the vertex, that point, and the V-shape for the graph. I'd like to show you one more example of a nonlinear rule, y equals x squared minus 5. This is the first time we've seen an x squared. And when there is an x squared, the graph is curved. So let's make the table and then we'll plot points. Now there are the points, but this graph does not come to a point. It's actually curved. So this is what the graph will look like when we draw it in. It's not a great drawing, but you get the general idea. Let me just show you a picture of what the graph really should look like. Here's what the graph looks like on Geometry's Sketchpad. So this is an example of another nonlinear rule.